Today on the Topic Show, Biden wants the Supreme Court to have reform now that a majority believe in the Constitution. Kamala lies about Trump abortion ban, but she does get positive social media feedback. Facebook is censoring the iconic picture of Trump's assassination attempt. Communists march in Philly and go viral. Google hides the Trump assassination attempt on their search engine. McDonald's sales dip for the first time in 13 fiscal quarters. Atlantis may sell Maserati. And BMW recalls nearly 290,000 SUVs. All of that and much, much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added resource and service company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see your founder at least twice a day. Guy say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or business owner, you can reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, still trying to get you 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So, if you could click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, at McDonald's, their sales dipped for the first time in 13 fiscal quarters as inflation continues to eat away at their sales and drive consumers away. Now, this is brought to us thanks to Fox Business, which, interestingly enough, is still so I'm not in business. Specifically, the writer is Daniel Gencroso, and they say, quote, McDonald's sales declined for the first time in years as higher fast food prices hurt demand. However, the rivals, Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell, they're actually doing okay. A little bit better than McDonald's. Now, this comes from McDonald's CEO Chris Kaminsky, saying that the system has suffered, quote, sustained significant inflationary cost between 20 and 40% depending on the market over the past several years. Yeah, remember when the, the government, what was that, Janet Yellen, the U.S. Treasury Department said, oh yeah, we think inflation is just transitory, which is a nice way of saying temporary. Yeah, turns out the government, yeah, they screwed us again. Now, he says, quote, I want to get a little picture. Oh, you can see a little, some of those McDonald's order right there. He says, quote, as we absorb these cost increases in partnership with our franchises, we look for ways to protect restaurant profitability via productivity efforts and selective price increases. These price increases disrupted long-term value programs and led consumers to reconsider their buying habits. Which, yes, that's the one, the one reason people go to McDonald's is it was fast and cheap and legally technically food. And again, some of my friends love their french fries. They, they're known for having french fries that are pretty good for decades. But, yeah, they're, they're in for tough, uh, tough days. Again, they have that $5 promo. But again, that's only conceivably somewhat little bit profitable for the franchisees because it's being offset by their giant partnerships like places like Coca-Cola, which again, even they can't do this long term. That's why it's a short term promotion. And with the cost of everything going up in fast food and especially the cost of labor, remember Calif or sorry, California, I forget how to pronounce that place way over on the West Coast. They increased minimum wage for fast food workers to $20 an hour. That caused the prices to skyrocket and 10,000 people to lose their jobs as well. And that's not just the only state increasing minimum wage laws. It's happening all over the U.S. And again, those laws are detrimental to the fast food industry. And it's getting to the breaking point. You're getting to the point where, I mean, what's the point of eating out these days in the fast food? The price keeps going up and up. It's almost comparable to like a sit-down restaurant putting in a whole different category of food. And just value is, the value is just not there. Like, granted, I am by no means a target demographic. I haven't had McDonald's since middle school. Partially because of a little bit of health nut, and partially because, eh, I'd rather spend that money on the business or something else. But, I mean, even the folks I know who had previously enjoyed fast food, but my friends went to, what was it, the Five Guys restaurant? And just a family of three, it was like $65 for dinner. That's insanity and unsustainable, especially when you have unprecedented political and economic uncertainty right now and hyperinflation due to our government ineptitudes. And yeah, this is not financial advice. I just cannot see how McDonald's is going to be doing this year. It looks like they say that shares are already down 50% this year as consumers continue to move away. And again, it's a luxury nobody needs in terms of fast food. It's one of the most unnecessary purchases Americans make and granted many of them make it, but Again, it's one of the easiest things to cut from your budget right now when so many people are struggling. You don't need fast food. So another reason why I personally don't think McDonald's is going to do, be doing good this year. But let me know. Do you think they'll somehow, I mean, somehow find a way to increase more productivity or 
squeeze some pennies somewhere to get that you know five dollar promo going long term it it's been successful it's got a lot of attention but again unless i could unless i can get that price point down again which again that might mean increasing automation it might mean having to you know have the stores just turn into giant vending machines i don't know what they're gonna have to do but if they can get that price point down again then i think it happened and it also it's got to be rough you know working there and trying to work that because again mcdonald's didn't cause inflation they're sure as hell trying to struggle to you know maintain their business to fight it but nevertheless let me know the cap cap oh geez louise apologies about that for some reason even if you mute box is the worst even if you mute the video it'll always pop up annoyingly so let me just x out of that completely but let me know once i say we actually went to mcdonald's and do you think the food is still good and right now with your current budget would you ever pay for fast food period let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Other interesting business news. Stellantis may actually sell Maserati as they struggle to maintain profitability with 14 brands. Which, yeah, even General Motors at their peak had about 8 brands. And they divested many of them when they bankrupt for the third time in 2009. Now GM is back to the key 4 brands of the business with a couple of vehicles that are fun to drive. Now, in terms of Stellantis, again, going back in time, Chrysler... Well, it used to be Chrys I mean, they used to be one of the best automotive companies on the planet. And it used to be back in the day, Dodge Brothers. Well, Chrysler bought Dodge Brothers, partially because of their foundry capabilities. And then they all, oh, Dodge Brothers, going back to that. And then you have Jeep, which is also owned by um, Chrysler because he started that company. But it, I partially digress. At the end of the day, that was a huge American brand. Unfortunately, they went bankrupt in 2009 and they were bought out by European based Fiat, which bought out more companies and they all reorganized to the now. Slightly cooler name, I guess, Stellantis, or Stellantis, if you want to sound fancy or Italian, maybe. Now, in terms of their portfolio, they have so many, I wonder how many you and I know. Let's pull up a list really quick, just for fun. So again, they own 14 brands right now. They own Alfa Romeo, which, if you're a gearhead or a racing enthusiast, you may remember them. They have Citroën, which is a funny French car company. If you ever read the old automotive books, they have the really, I know them for the lightweight, interesting vehicles with the unique suspension way back in the day. They have DS Automobiles, never heard of them. They have Fiat Professional, which is probably, yeah, their commercial brand, their commercial side of the business. They have Lancia, never heard of that. Opel, that is a long heritage-based European company. That was actually bought out by General Motors nearly 100 years ago, but then again, they spun it off in the 2009 bankruptcy. Opel's a moderately popular name. Then they have Ram, which, so stupid in terms of marketing a Chrysler, making that its own or not, Chrysler, which again, they own Dodge. And then for a while, they said Ram is going to be this individual brand. I don't know. To me, everyone I know who has a truck calls it a Dodge Ram. They also have Chrysler, which technically still makes vehicles for 10 people. Then they have Dodge, which used to be one of the coolest muscle car companies out there, making the biggest V8s that could fit in those things. And now, thanks to uh, Slant, it's going to make a EVs and uh, engine uh, straight six twin turbo engines, as opposed to good old Hemi, which people knew and they loved. They also have Fiat, which people do know, or fix it again, Tony. Then you also have Jeep, which has one of the best name recognitions on the planet when it comes to an off-road vehicle. I'm exceedingly impressed with the sales of Jeep, and just in general, the whole concept of Jeep, when compared to the reliability of the vehicle. But people keep buying it. It's very similar to Range Rover, and I say that with and Land Rover. I, and I say that having friends who buy who own both, they just love it that much. Then they do, of course, have Maserati, just fancy Italian race cars, well, sports cars. Then you have Peugeot, which not a lot of people know them for the pepper grinders. Then you have Vauxhall, which I mean, yeah, I think a couple a couple of people might know that. And so that's their entire portfolio. Now, in terms of trimming the fat. What's the easiest one to kill right now? Chrysler. Kill it. They only make three vehicles right now. They even said they're going to kill one of the three. So really, they only make one, which is the van, which Dodge also makes their mini, you know, they have their van too. So for years, those things have made, been made in parallel, just like how General Motors had the GMC Sierra, as well as the Chevy Silverado. Same truck, same assembly plant, different badges, and maybe some different paint. But... Yeah, in terms of Chrysler, I mean, the Chrysler 300 was a pretty cool stand. You could get it with a good old V8, a lot of muscle in that. But they said, oh, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we're, we're probably going to get rid of that because it's selling too well. They didn't say it like that, but they are getting rid of it. So really, Chrysler right now just has the van, which more and more Americans are getting crossovers and SUVs. 
and trucks. Vans are eh, not as popular as they used to be. So to me, I'd be I'd be cutting Chrysler. I mean, I know that's ironically one of the best known name, but in terms of the products, Dodge and Adoli, I think there's more name recognition behind Dodge products than actually Chrysler. It's kind of ironic because again, Chrysler bought out Dodge Brothers all those years ago. But now that they can maybe look at Maserati, which in my opinion be pretty foolish again not financial advice but usually want to keep on to those luxury automobiles because that's where you make a lot of profit and there's a lot of parts sharing which sometimes they do get made fun of for having the same buttons from like a little jeep renegade also or fiat bastardized suv is also in like an 80 90 150,000 dollars plus maserati now this comes with us thanks to motor one and again right now it's still a rumor and slight they say quote the light just hints at selling maserati the Italian brand is at big trouble after sales in, in H1 2024 dropped by over 50%. Maybe it's just because you're not making the cars exciting enough. Why do they only have three pedals, Stellantis? I'm kidding. I'm only, I know I'm part of the 1.9% of people in the United States who buy and love stick shift vehicles, but that'd be a good way to differentiate themselves from the other luxury sports cars. There are fewer and fewer left. But I partially digress. There you can see a nice little Maserati as it depreciates going down the street by 50%, roughly. Now, I only partially jest. Again, not financial advice. Historically speaking, Maseratis depreciate like a rock. Like, just right off a cliff. But I partially digress. This is by Adriano Piano. He says, quote, Managing 14 brands is a tricky business for Slantis. Shortly after publishing disappointing results for the first half of the year, CEO Carlos Tavares says unprofitability companies will be killed off. Besides the possibility of discontinuing automakers, that I'm not making any money, a conglomerate might try to offload others. Maserati is in the pole position for getting adoptive parents. This isn't just hot gossip. This is an actual statement from Slash's official chief financial officer, Knight, uh, Natalie Knight, admitted there might be a time when Maserati will come up for grabs. Her words precisely, quote, there could be at some point in the future when we look at what's best for Maserati, uh, what's the best home for Maserati. Statement comes shortly after week H1 2020 results. Through June, the troubled Italian Marquis sold 6,500 cars, a decrease of more than 50% compared to the first half of 2023, when 15,300 vehicles were delivered. Now, that being said, I don't, want to beat, I don't mean to beat up on Maserati too much, well, maybe just a little, but what's the big difference between last year and this year? Even worse inflation and election year, and you have those good old, oh, the painful, crippling, uh, yeah, interest rates. That is driving down the Omo community as a whole for a lot of folks. I mean, the interest rates are out of control, which again is another thanks to our inept government, left and right, printing more money. So we had to, you know, do all the increase the rates to try to tap down inflation. They say, quote, the company has had the Triat logo, has lived a long travel life, having more than a few owners since it was founded in 1914. Italian industrialist Adolf Orsio, along with Citroën di Tommaso. Chrysler, Fiat, and Ferrari either have had stakes or controlled Maserati at one point. The company is currently under Slantis corporate umbrella after Fiat, Chrysler Automobiles, and PSA Group merged in 2021. Now, again, this is just the inequities of the company. Because again, yeah, of all the things you can do as a business in terms of automobiles, you usually want to have one really, a higher luxury vehicle that's more profitable and also rate, elevates the whole corporate veil or whole corporate brand. There's a reason pretty much every major automotive company has a big luxury division or luxury brand. I mean, you have Toyota, they own Lexus. You have even, even little Nissan, well, they have Infinity for the 18 people who want to buy Infinities. They have Honda, they have Acura. They have General Motors, they have Cadillac. Ford, you have Lincoln. Pretty much all these automotive companies have a more premium version of all their vehicles. And there's a lot of sharing in the parts in many ways, so that keeps the cost down and helps make those vehicles more profitable. I mean, one of the best examples being the Cadillac Escalade that shares a lot of parts with the Chevy SUV or the, what is it, Chevy Tahoe Suburban, whatever they call those big monstrosities on the road. I mean, those things are highly profitable because there's so many parts sharing. Which begs the question, who would buy Maserati? There's some people in the comments speculating maybe Ferrari would buy it, which would be somewhat ironic because they used to be fierce competitors. But... Again, I think there's other fat you can trim for the budget from Stellantis. I mean, firstly, Chrysler. You keep the buildings, the infrastructure, and the people. But like, the actual resources spent making that one little van and a couple of other things they've done throughout the years. I feel like you can get rid of that pretty quick. 
But in terms of getting Maserati, which is, again, one of the luxury vehicles, I wouldn't be doing that, but hey, we'll see. What the, 14 brands is a lot. I think there's other brands they could be cutting. But let me know. What are your thoughts? Do you think they should just spin this off into an individual? Maybe a, I mean, shoot, they could maybe spin it off to another company or maybe do an IPO and have it be a standalone company. Personally, I don't think they have the resource allocation, the brand awareness, or the, I don't think there's enough demand for that to be a standalone company necessarily. But let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the culture part of the podcast, you have Facebook censoring the Trump picture of him with the assassination attempt. Hmm, fascinating and somewhat ironic because Mark Zuckerberg recently said how he thought it was really you know, awesome that Trump you know, survived it and does one of the most badass things he ever done. And yet, now it is, of course, election year, so censorship is ramping up, which is why I, I always, always post my show every day on Spotify, Apple Podcast, pretty much every podcast platform, as well as the big green streaming platform, which one of those things where it's like saying the, what is it, the one movie with the poltergeist or something where you say the name in the mirror and they pop out and they end your life. Then there's the same rumor with uh, the YouTube, if you say the big green competitor, they'll blacklist your videos, which would be hard, would be, it'd be hard for them to do worse than what they're already doing. At least when I look at statistics and I say, wait a minute, this video got zero views, but I have a couple thousand subscribers. How is that statistically impossible? And I don't think their videos are that bad. Maybe I'll get negative views someday, but I partially just. Now this is brought to us thanks to End Wokeness. This quote, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg called Trump fist image one of the most badass things I've seen in the past uh, 10 days ago. Facebook is now censoring that image. See here what Mark has to say here. Oh, maybe. I mean, on a personal note, it's, you know, I mean, seeing Donald Trump get, get up after getting shot in the face and pump his fist in the air with the American flag is one of the most badass things I've ever seen in my life. It's fascinating to see the rebranding of Mark Zuckerberg. He almost appears human. I mean, as a youth might say, he's off the chain. He actually has a golden chain. His latest, the latest version of Zuckerberg is, I mean, software update is phenomenal. I, of course, I'm partially kidding. And yeah, someone's taking a, a couple of folks are taking screenshots of their Facebook feedback where it says, quote, altered photo in the post that you shared. You shared this photo. And it says, independent fact checkers reviewed a similar photo and said it could be altered in a way that would mislead people. Facebook has determined your post has some altered photo and added a notice to the post. People who repeatedly share false information might have their posts moved to news feed, uh, lower in news feed so that people are less likely to see them. Uh, fascinating. Yep, and it's literally just that iconic picture of Trump holding his hand up in defiance. And this one pretty well got 256,000 views and 20,000 likes. Now, one of the first comments comes from uh, Gina Gill says, if Elon were to develop a search engine resembling Google, but without any left-wing propaganda, would you consider using it? I'm quote, getting 74 likes, which, I mean, in terms of realistic alternatives, a lot of people used to use DuckDuckGo uh, before they actually decided, oh, we think we know best with the Russia-Ukraine thing, so we're going to censor all news from Russia. Which, again, some people just want all the data and be able to make the decision on their own, not have someone decide for them what information they see. So most of my friends using DuckDuckGo ditched that to the curb or would be a nice, would be more fascinating metaphor. They took that duck out to the pond and gave it lots of bread, which I guess nowadays is actually a bad thing and it kills them, unfortunately. But nevertheless, now a lot of my friends and I use Braid. It's a great search engine. Now, I'm not sure if there's much competition in terms of Elon making his own. Now, the Texas one says election interference season getting 22 likes, which, yep. Paul Zupa says ironic, getting 14 likes. Red Wave Press says Zuck needs to clean house and stop letting his liberal employees censor conservatives on his platform, getting 273 play, uh, likes. Valentina Gomez says he's like a politician. They tell you what you want to hear, and then they stab you in the back with their actions. Sounds familiar, getting 149 likes. Kind of a funny gif of the MP, was it MPC Pearson? The NPR person? Kidding, maybe. And so from Libercat Media TM says the chips are switched. And it's so the little NPC person says, I'm sticking with Biden no matter what. And you switch out the brain chip for the picture of Kamala it says, I'm with her. You got 136 likes. Let's see, Liberty Pill Mean says, Stop censoring the truth. It says, Elon says, I want the truth. And 
Yeah, well, Zuckerberg says the truth goes against our community guidelines. Getting 126 likes. Space Chef has an iconic little, was that the little picture of Ron Swanson from Parks walking to a Homes or Love De Home Depot? And it says, you know, CNN, Fox News, NBC, and ABC it says, here's today's news. And Ron has X on his shirt, as the X Twitter on his shirt. He says, I know more than you. And that got 48 likes. Aku Sharma says Zuck is an opportunist. I trust him to do what is financially benefit him right most. Right now, he senses the mood in the room has shifted, gaining 33 likes, which I definitely agree the mood has shifted. Going down more and more. Liberty Pilmeen says Zuck forgot he is not supposed to say that. And it's Mark Zuckerberg in front of a Trojan horse. It says suppression, Facebook, Instagram, and threads for the 18 people who use threads. They got 37 people to like it. I guess I'm not. Gary says they are mistaking it. This for a fake photo. The Secret Service agent smiling. Yeah, one like. They're mistaking it for this fake photo. So someone made a photo of them smiling. Okay. You got one like. Really? Eh, the other ones looked like it was a regular smile or the regular not smiling. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if Facebook will ever go back to something that's more so like X Twitter with community notes, or if it'll only be the Facebook employees to make the edits. Interesting. And it is election season, so I'm not too surprised, but let me know in the comments. Have you seen this yourself with your Facebook post lately? As always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting cultural news you have communists marching in Philly. And I'm not being bombastic or anything, it is literally a communist. In the United States. Interesting. Well, concerning more like it. Now this comes to us thanks to end wokeness. And interestingly enough, this is not a DNC convention. He says, quote, hundreds marched in Philly today support an ideology ideology responding responsible for a hundred million deaths. True. Like about twenty seconds uh, twenty one seconds long. I mean, fact check, the U.S. already wastes trillions of dollars, quote-unquote, feeding the poor. Statistically speaking, it does help some people, but there are a lot of people who have been on benefits for, like, a lifetime or many. So, yeah, giving away stuff for free is also immoral, but also doesn't work long-term. Some of these guys... I mean, this guy is the size of Lizzo. Interestingly enough, he's wearing, like, tan shorts, knee-high socks, suspenders, and a polo. FMI fashion and mental health for these folks. It is kind of also funny that they all look, you know, I don't want to say weak, but uh, most of them probably, they couldn't do more than three push ups on average, I would say. A lot of really, a lot of soy boys, uh, a couple beer bellies. Yeah. And hilariously enough, they're talking about communism. I'm sure that they paid someone for those flags. And this might be pretty valid. I got 1.6 million views in 27. Let's see if we can make it 28. No, okay. It wasn't the one additional one needed for it. But it says 27,000 likes. Now, oh, scrolling down some of the top comments. We have Sandy saying, they're going to be shocked when they find out that the Gulag is not a fun camp. And it looks like a picture from Babylon B, and it says young communists unsettled to find that the hammer and sickle represent physical labor. In 331 likes. Paul Zupa also says they either don't care about human life or they don't know what they're marching for. In 325 likes. Might be a little column A, a little column B, as you might say. I said Gunther Eagleman saying vote for Trump or we'll get communism. Getting 723 likes. And he says facts. It says communism according to college students. Little, like a fairy tale land, it says free bread, gulag fun camp, Karl Marx holding the peace sign. And as juxtaposed the picture of communism according to history, it's someone being shot and they're tied up. In 2.4 thousand likes, and also a friendly reminder of what happens when only the government has firearms. Spoiler alert, the uh, most evil things in history, which is why any person with modicum of intelligence about 
your average American have more the same, if not more, the arms in the government. But I of course digress. Tim Young says this guy looks like he'd enjoy a solid bread line. It's the portly gentleman right there. And it got 2.1 thousand likes. One bad dude says these people are either paid or just plain stupid, possibly both. Yep, getting 3,000 likes. Granted, public schools are all-time low for like, I think it's a 27-year low for AT ACT scores. I mean, they're all-time low for much every metric. Can't help but wonder do they even teach history these days in public schools? Yes, I'm Maria Isabella says, I can get behind this, and says, here's an idea, a reality show where socialist college students are sent to a country that closely resembles their desired political system and left to survive for a few months. I got 735 likes. Maria Isabella says, I can't even, or sorry, I can't even with these dropped on their head birth type commies. It says communism 100 years, 150 million dead. Got 395 likes. Machiavelli says they're all bought and paid for, but for useful idiots. Says it's easy to be a uh, communist in a free country, but try being free in a communist country. Gain 1,000 likes. True. Let's see. Maria Isabella says, They'll bring it here if we let them. It says, fact, communism has destroyed every country has ever t uh, ever been tried in. Liberals, yeah, it was it, is it Wallace or Grumman? I always forget the old claymation cartoons. It's one of the two, but it's the gentleman, the humanoid figure from that show. It says, let's try another spot. Game 572 likes, which, yes, they're very mentally vacuous because it, it literally has never worked ever and caused hundreds of millions of deaths. They keep saying, oh, yeah, it's never truly been tried. Uh huh. Got 572 likes again. Valentina Gomez says, Why don't they go to Cuba or China and Venezuela? If they don't like America, they can get the F out. 899 looks like it. 900 likes. Brian the Scotty says, Fight. This picture of Trump defiantly pumping his fist up after he was attempted assassination. Game 499 looks like it. 500 likes. Washington Ghost also says, Also, it's that same portly gentleman who. The suspenders are working overtime. Those are high quality, perhaps military grade new material to keep those pants up. Got 308 likes for that. Let's see. Libercat Media TM also says because they're all in this sign that says Democrats are communists, getting 1,000 likes. Let's see. Is there any contrary comments? Because again, there are millions of Americans, well, I, I would call them Americans, but people who have American citizenship. Who do believe in communism and they vote for it? I mean, perhaps again because they've never read a history book or met a contrarian statement, or they just are their own in their own little isolation bubble. But yeah, there are people who want this. I would love. We should. I actually think we should have a foreign exchange program. They seem to really, really, really want communism. I mean, I would actually be a fan of using U.S. tax dollars to export them to a country that has that political system ideology already in place, and they can live there. They say they want it. Why, why not Why not be compassionate and let them have that experience? Ship over to China or Cuba. See how they like it. Then while we're at it, why don't we import some free loving Americans or people who want to become American and they want to escape communism? That's namely enough. I've never heard of a single person escaping to Cuba or China or any other communist place. Venezuela. Have you ever met any... Have you ever heard anyone who escaped to those countries? No, never. Of course not. Come to America, land of capitalism, or if you work like hell, you'll get far enough. It's mind-boggling how mentally vacuous some people are in the United States. And I really hope they wake up soon, because again, communism is the most evil mechanism I can possibly conceive of since the dawn of time. But, I mean, let me know. I mean, in the circle of friends, do you have anyone with that ideology? I mean, have they seen what really goes on? That Have they seen the real-life examples of how terrible it truly is i mean let me know in the comments as always be fascinated here what you have to say other interesting cultural news you have google hiding the trump assassination as the big tech censorship ramps up and incidentally more and more of my videos just mysteriously disappear on the youtube which again is why i always upload daily to spotify apple podcast big green streaming alternative because again just some data they just don't like the public knowing apparently now, this first was brought to my attention by Craig Stingerkamp over on X Twitter. And here he actually shows a video of him trying to Google the assassination attempt. And of course, the autocomplete is completely not there. And again, this is the most powerful search engine company on the planet in history. They have more data than people can possibly comprehend. 
they know the Trump assassination attempt happened. There's zero reason, zero, zero technical reason why it shouldn't autocomplete. You're searching for it. Now, again, this goes on, goes to, thanks to Craig. And he says, quote, would you consider this foul slash play election interference? Which I think most people would. Let's see, is he saying anything here? No volume, but we'll pull up the screen. For those just tuning in, he's going to the Google homepage. And they have the trending searches. Then he starts, you know, typing in stuff. So he types in assassination. And it looks like the first thing that comes up when he just types that is assassination classroom, assassination nation. And it's like a character. So I guess maybe that's TV show. Now he, he continues typing. Assassination's attempt. Now the autocomplete is assassination attempt on Reagan, assassination attempt on Hitler, assassination attempt on Fidel Castro, assassination attempt on Slovakia, assassination attempt on Bob Marley, assassination attempt on Truman, assassination attempt on Gerald Ford. Those are the eight autocompletes from Google. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. The most relevant recent one is suspiciously absent. So he's going to go further. So now he adds the word on. And he adds the word, he adds the word the letter T. Which, again, if you've been all, if you're every, anyone on the planet right now, you're wanting to see information about the Donald Trump attempted assassination. And yet, Google, their top three autocompletes for that search, again, the right now this person is Googling assassination attempt on T. This is the autocomplete. Is it goes assassination attempt on Truman? Assassination attempt on Teddy Roosevelt. Assassination attempt on the Pope. Those are the top three occupied. Ridiculous. He even types in T uh, R U. So it's assassination attempt on T R U, and it says assassination attempt on Truman, and it says which president survived an assassination attempt. Those are the two autocomplete. He even has the P, and there's no autocomplete. And then he, when he searches it, then it shows up. And again, there's a lot of power in that autocomplete. Now, this one pretty well got... See, that got 500, but the other one got even more. So, another instance, there's one lives at TikTok. Now, lives at TikTok says, quote, Even if you type the entire word, no results will fill on Google. We're witnessing the erasure of history in real time of unbelievable. In her case, she literally just typed in assassination attempt of Trump. And again, there's no, the, no autocomplete. Now that got 10.5 million views. And 89,000, could we be the 90th? Could we? No, but we did like it nevertheless. So 89,000 likes. One of the first results comes from Cloud World, who gets A plus for the reference. He simply says 1984, which again was a brilliant novel by George Orwell, which everyone should almost think it should be required to read. But again, I think there's maybe a reason why government schools or government funded schools aren't, you know, teaching most kids about it. It's not a very happy book, but it's unfortunately uh, all too real to what modern society has become. There's TikTok simply responding saying, yep, getting 3,000 likes. Arthur Eagleman says, go, Google is a liberal, a liberal trash propaganda, getting 1.4 thousand likes. Arthur, or sorry, uh, Paul Zupa says, election interference, getting 965 likes. The Texas one says, good thing we are the media now, getting 406. They get 407 likes, which... Yep, I'm a big fan of Xcritter. It's one of the few platforms, actually no, it is the only platform in terms of social media which I actually pay for. Not to brag, but I do have $7 a month that I could spare for that. This is an added expense. Because, yeah, it's the one area where you truly do have freedom of speech and you can actually get the data you want. Right then, synthesis to mainstream media. We also have Boom Boom Jenkins saying, never forget, it's July 13th, 2024. It's the iconic picture of Trump holding his arm over defiance. It says, now he actually says, uh, again, he says, uh, not, never forget, uh, July 13, 2024, was an inside job, getting 1.1 thousand likes, which it'll be fascinating to see if we ever have, if we ever get the real answer at the end of the day. There's a lot of coincidences and a lot of things that all lined up for that to happen. Which, uh, yeah, I'll never forget the head of the Secret Service, the former, former uh, Doritos guard. He said, oh yeah, we didn't have a place, we didn't have a counter step around there because the roof was sloped. And a couple days later, a little, a cow climbed onto that roof. And I don't mean the Secret Service agent when she resembled a cow. I mean an actual cow climbed up on that to the, under the roof. And yet the Secret Service official statement was, oh yeah, the, the safety of our snipers, we couldn't have them on a, on a sloped roof. 
It's just leg climb is too much. Yeah, I'll never forget that excuse. Or, let's be honest, lie. That did get 1.1 thousand likes. Not me, but that specific statement, which is a, another friendly reminder to like this. Tom Reen says Google is a lot more than a search engine. They index and provide info for many other programs. This is a much bigger deal than it appears. This is absolutely election interference and more. I think there are several lawsuits available on this. Hoping someone makes it happen. That got 1.2 thousand likes. Now, another friendly reminder in terms of election interference. I think the GOP tried to sue Google for $2 billion. Because Google, if you use Gmail, they actually automatically flagged Republican donor emails as spam. So you would never see it unless you go to your spam folder. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, weird people like me will check their spam folder just in case, but 99.99% of people never check their spam folder. So yeah, and they can sway huge elections. There's a brilliant interview. It was a, I remember the technical gentleman that Stephen Crowder interviewed a couple weeks ago, but he had him on the show, and he talked about how Google could sway whole elections, and just a little bit of them pushing. Another big one is just saying out, I mean, just reminders to people to go vote. It's astronomical how much of a sway they can have on elections. One bad dude says, is it time to boycott Google? Getting 1.6 thousand likes, which, yeah, it's pretty damn easy. Just download Brave. Great alternative. I've been using it for maybe two, uh, maybe two to three years by now, I think, give or take. I like it. It's a little bit faster. You don't get as many image results. If you want, like, a specific image of something, that might be a little disappointing for some. But, yeah, I'm average. I love Brave. It works great for me. Pull down more and more. Is and oh yeah, that's funny. Someone says, "Uh, hey Google, don't be evil. That's our job." They used to have a sign in their building that says, "Like don't be evil" or something like that, and they decided to take it down years ago. Right Angle News Network says, "Quote: All the giant tech and social media companies around that conspired against Donald Trump and the American people during the 2020 are now doing it during the 2024 election. Will face some severe consequences of the law." And 483 likes, which yeah, I don't know about that. We'll see if they're actually held accountable. I not a gambling man, but I'd say the odds are uh, not very good. Eh, not too many contrarian statements here. I'll do one more. This is a good GIF or a meme. Eric Garland presses the release parody account says never again. It's a picture of, again, Trump iconically holding up his fist defiance. It says, make no mistake, they didn't fail to protect him. They failed to kill him. It got 978 likes. They had many people copy and pasting their own experiences of you know, trying to search on Google and getting no results. So it's not too surprising. And culturally speaking, I mean, so many people are addicted to Google. It is sad. Most people, when I speak to them, they have no idea what the big green alternative is to the YouTube, which is not great news for Freem because, again, it's the one of the few websites where you can actually, you know, the app, they can actually post videos without being censored at the wazoo. But again, Google has market share. Billions of people use YouTube every day. Maybe a couple million use alternative. It's it's growing, don't get me wrong. It's growing, it's a great platform, and it's, the capabilities are getting better. But Google is so massive. So I always tell people, spread the word, let them know alternatives. Maybe we'll see that pendulum slift, you know, sway a little bit more in our lifetime. It's going to be a long haul of a cultural movement, but perhaps it'll happen. Let me know, have you ever used a YouTube alternative? I remember back, what was that, in high school? Years ago, people used to use Vimeo. I know a lot of photographers and videographers appreciate that platform that's kind of been there more niche lately but let me know would you ever i mean what would it take for you to move away from something like google or youtube again put that in the comments because as always be fascinated to hear what you have to say now going over to the political part of the podcast you have biden wanting to uh oh yeah he wants supreme court reform now because uh there's more constitutionalist than not now this comes to us straight from the horse's mouth well more realistically, it's probably one of his interns because we know he doesn't tweet himself. But again, this from Biden's ex Twitter profile says the nation was founded on a simple yet profound principle: no one is above the law. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh necessarily, but uh, yeah, no one's above the law. How much does his son get for the Burisma thing? Ten percent for the big guy. Oh yeah, L literally saying I don't care if it's unconstitutional. The landlords won't be able to charge people rent during the pandemic. He literally said he knew it was unconstitutional, but he's still going to do it. Same with student loans. But uh, yeah, he says that uh, no one's above the law. Okay. Then he says, quote, not just President of the United States, not uh, Justice of the Supreme not a, not the United States Supreme Court, not Justice on the, uh, oh, let me take that, 
And we'll send a little Biden football by speaking in aptitudes. It says, not the President of the United States, not the Justice of the Supreme Court. So today, I'm calling for a three-hole reform to restore trust and accountability to the court and democracy. One, no more immunity for crimes of a former president committed while in office. Well, he's going to be in jail. Well, well Biden actually, no. Two, term limits for Supreme Court justices. Three, a binding code of conduct for the Supreme Court. Read about how these actions would straighten the guard rails of our democracy. Link here. And of course, it goes to the Washington Post. Yeah. So now that you're losing, you want to change the rules. Yet again, as we've seen that side of the uh, political aisle do more and more. And one of the most hilarious things I always tell people is never forget. I mean, one of the reasons there's a more more constitutionalist than not this report is because Ruth Bader Ginsburg was so egotistically just so selfish, she refused to step down when Obama was in office. And again, when you talk about who you, I mean, it fascinates me that people don't want constitutionalists on the Supreme Court. I mean, they should all believe in the, I mean, I mean, it should be common sense. You want people to actually believe in the founding fathers and constitution. But you actually have someone on the Supreme Court that Biden appointed who, well, he also chose someone based on their race as well as their gender, which is illegal, but he did it anyway. It's Jackson Brown. He does not know what a woman is. That's, that's what he wants more of on the Supreme Court. When they asked her during the little interview or little questionnaire before, you know, during the nomination process, they asked her, do you know what a woman is? And her, her answer was, I'll never forget, I'm not a biologist. That's uh, from the Party of Reason, I'm told. Party of Science. Now, this went pretty well. I got 2.8 million views and 58,000 mentally vacuous likes, but likes nevertheless. And one of the first ones comes from Ed Kranzenstein, which I'm pretty sure he's on their payroll. I don't know how much he's allegedly making. He says, every American should want this unless they're authoritarian. Yeah. There's a handsome gentleman that did respond to him, though, so I'm definitely going to read this comment. Might be a little biased. The topping show says, but you didn't want any term limits when you had more people that were left wing on the Supreme Court. Typical hypocrite. I got 22 likes. Really one for myself. Task Force 84 says, no, Joe, you can't do this. I don't think you understand that the Supreme Court is a powerful branch of government. Just because they told you no doesn't mean you get to change the rules. Getting 2.4 thousand likes. Brother Eagleman coming in a lot of likes in this case. Says, now do Hunter Biden, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Mayorkas, Merrick Garland, etc. No one is above the law unless you're a Democrat. Gain 10,000 likes. You also have Al Zuba saying, quote, Joe Biden has never faced legal consequences for selling our, our country to foreign nations just so he could, as long as he could profit financially. He also committed treason against America by abandoning our border. If Biden really believes no one is above the law, he should turn himself in. Gain 2.5 thousand likes. Arthur Eagleman says, quote, the staffer who wrote this should read the Constitution and gain 3.3. Oh, I thought we can get the 3.4 thousand likes. Was not the additional like needed to get over that hump, but nevertheless, 3.3 thousand people did like it. We do have a contrarian statement. You have Art Candy, who, oddly enough, her name is spelled C-A-N-D-E-E, -E, so not the right spelling. And there are her emojis, which again, I was a little, as youth might say, sus to have emojis in your name, is a popcorn, which, again, yeah, salty, and a cup of water with a straw, which I've never heard... Unless someone is physically disabled, I've never seen someone drink water from a straw that isn't a serial killer. I don't think. Which also is not sweet. But nevertheless, Art Candy, silly name, almost as ridiculous as a name like Topping. Oh wait, I partially digress, but nevertheless, Art Candy says, quote, yeah, yes, with like six exclamation points, she's very happy. Now we need to flip the house and get more seats in the Senate. Gained 1.4 thousand likes. She also got 83 replies, one of the most responded to. Was she ratioed, perhaps? Uh, not by number of likes, but maybe number of comments. JW says, move to Venezuela and then report back in the year, please. Gain 56 likes. Oh, let's see here. Oh, we got Sherry says, what you suggest isn't impossible. We just need to do it. No likes, but someone did say that. Let's see. Guy Incognito says, so your plan, if you get powers to eliminate the checks of our government, this alone should encourage freedom loving people to vote against you. Gain three, let's make it four likes. Uh, let's see. So she was ratioed by number of comments, but not number of likes of those comments. Planet of Memes, which oh, did not respond, did not really respond in meme form. Nevertheless, Planet of Memes says the Democrat way. If you don't get the results you want, you try to change the laws. Again, 1.3. Oh, again, was that the lucky vote or like to get to 1.4 thousand? Now, Sassafras84 says, let's not forget Joe Biden has been in office for 50 years. I swear you sta your staffer writes a parody. Getting 793 likes. Play on meme says, how about some term limits on Congress? Gain 1.6 thousand likes. Let's see, is there any more contrarian statements? Let's see, you also have Harrison Crank. Says, Democrats literally had to pull a coup 
on you a week ago and you are talking about term limits? Ha 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 ha. Okay, 1.4 thousand likes. David Keynes says, four, any person convicted of a felony is ineligible to run for president, getting 3.5 thousand likes. So a couple contrarian statements. Let's see here. There's another one. Yeah, more or less the same. These are interesting ones here. This is an unpopular one. Mays says, guy who's been in politics for 50 years, whose team, team literally hid the fact that his brain no longer functions so he can remain in power, is calling for term limits. Getting 6.5 thousand likes. Sarah Rose says, is there term limits for demented presidents, or is that via coup only? Getting 1.1 thousand likes. Matt Hatter says, the man who accomplished nothing in 50 years of politics, but enriching himself and his family, wants to talk about term limits. Getting 124 likes. See. Joe Biden press release parody account says I should be allowed to remain in Congress Chris for 36 years but need term limits on the Supreme Court getting 734 likes or 64 likes rather. Liberal Cat Media TM also has a what is this little little cartoon of Pelosi says yes known as the law of a law except Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, John Brennan, James Clapper, Eric Holder, James Comey, Barack Obama, Hunter Biden, illegal aliens, Democrat yeah. getting 664 likes. So, and again, this is the president's account. It should be about 50-50 representation of people left versus people on the right following him and responding. And yet, we only found a couple. Well, we did find a handful of people who did agree with him. The overwhelming in terms of the comments uh, pretty negative. And again, I think if you really want to cause more strife and more conflict in the country, yeah. Changing the rules of the game is definitely the way to do it. I don't think... I think that'd be one of the worst things our country's done in two decades there to try and tamper with the Supreme Court. I mean, a lot of people don't realize how much rise on the Supreme Court and how, how instrumental it is. So, yeah, that's, that's her suggestion. That's what he's calling for. Again, will this be done in reality? I don't think so. And again, it's fascinating to see, I don't really think Biden is saying this, we rewind the tape of, even just to 2020, Biden proudly said during a debate with Kamala and the other uh, prospective Democrat nominees, he said that would be terrible. You do not mess with the Supreme Court. He said it would cause strife. He said it would cause conflict. He said he had to abide by the Constitution. He actually sounded pretty articulate. Well, especially, you know, relative to now. But, yeah, I, I don't really think it's him uh, typing this out on a computer or his iPad or whatever he uses these days as a device. Or, more accurately, perhaps his uh, Fisher-Price toy. But let me know. Do you think, I mean, there are Americans who are calling for the expansion of the Supreme Court. Do you think it will happen in our lifetime? And what do you think the fall would be if it were to happen? Let me know in the comments. As always, it be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Other interesting political news. You have Kamala Harris lies about Trump abortion ban, but she does go moderately viral on social media. With this being one of the top topics for the new year, or rather for the new election, is how you can kill babies. But again, millions of people will vote on this topic alone. There are a lot of single voter, single issue voters. This will inevitably get people to vote for and against her. You have the pro-lifers voting against Kamala, and the pro, well, they call themselves pro-choice, then they'd be voting for her. One of the most hilarious things is when people say, why should men care about this? But those are the same people who cannot define what a woman is, and also say that men are women. So that argument of theirs, their old argument, is kind of a default. But nevertheless, this comes straight from Kamala's mouth, or maybe one of her handlers on X Twitter. Now, she claims, well, I don't know where her statistics are coming from, because of course she doesn't cite them, which... Again, left or right, whoever you are, more data, the better. Give us the statistical analysis. But nevertheless, she says, quote, more than one in three women of reproductive age in America now live in a state with the Trump abortion ban. When I'm president of the United States, I will sign a law restoring and protecting freedom, protecting reproductive freedom in every state. Well, spoiler alert, you can't because the Supreme Court, re, you know, they put that down to the states. So if she tries to pay... But again, this is posturing. It's a move on the political chessboard. It, and again, we got some positive comments. Let's uh, hear what she has to say. So I know it's probably painful for the ear balls, but it's only 33 seconds. Hey, everybody. So today, Iowa put in place a Trump abortion ban, which makes Iowa the 22nd state in our country to have a Trump abortion ban. And this ban is going to take effect before many women even know they're pregnant. And what this means is that one in three women of reproductive age in America lives in a state with a Trump abortion ban. 
So what we need to do is vote, because I'm gonna tell you something. When I am president of the United States, I will sign into law the protections for reproductive freedom. So let's get this done. Uh, okay, if she does, again, the Supreme Court will strike it down. Because it's been ruled that, again, it's back to where it should be. This is a state's issue. Now, one of the most hilarious uh, things about the situation is that, never forget, if it wasn't for the egotistical, hungry power, mentally vacuous, more than vacuous person that was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you wouldn't have, you, I mean, millions of lives would not be saved, but you wouldn't have this whole issue. Because again, it was only because she was so power hungry, she refused to step down when Barack Obama was in office, which, in terms of movies on the political chessboard, yeah, she should have done. But she was too power hungry. She, she, she clung on to power so that she actually expired when Trump was in office, who was able to appoint people who believe in the Constitution to the Supreme Court. And they, again, ruled this is back to a state's issue. And states are deciding whether they want there to be more or less. If you live in Minnesota, you can abort all the way up to nine months, which if you poll people on average, most people do not agree with that. But that's what their state wants. They, they voted that way and the citizens are, you know, and Somalians are all living there relatively happily in that cold hellhole, some might say. Oh, including myself. But, yeah, you won't be able to, you know, you pass a law, maybe, but it gets struck down in a New York minute by the Supreme Court. Because, again, they've ruled on this. Now, if you want to vote on a state level, then, yes, you can change this topic. You can change the law in this regard. But uh, on a federal level, no. I mean, it's already been decided. Again, she's probably going to raise a couple of millions of dollars off this one topic alone. And interestingly enough, Republicans will also raise millions of dollars off this one topic alone. Now, Red Prix Battle got about 578,000 views and only 28,000 likes. Now, one of the first comments comes from Art Candy, who, again, her name is spelled C-A-N-D-E-E. -E -E. Weird. Almost as weird as a name like Topping. Or should digress. But nevertheless, she says, we're going to show up in November. Which... She, I'll give her a little bit, she gets a little bit of credit for a model of credit, you know, a little creativity there. Roe, remember? It, again, it was in reference to Roe versus Wade, which, again, the Supreme Court already overturned and put it back to the states. Nevertheless, they did get 198, or no, 192 likes and 56 comments. Was she ratioed, or were they all giving her accolades? I haven't found out. One of the first responses to Art Candy, well, I'm a little biased, but this handsome gentleman did get three likes, so I'm going to go ahead and read what he has to say. It's me, of course. Now, I say, quote, Ironic, it was in part due to the egotistical Ruth Bader Ginsburg being so power-hungry she didn't step down when Obama was in office, which allowed Trump to appoint constitutionalists to the Supreme Court to make this a state issue once again. There is no Trump abortion ban, and he has said he would not make a federal law against it. True and handsome, some might say. Because, again, just wind back the clock... During the, during the debate with Biden, which, again, he mostly slept, Biden, but Trump said he would not pass an additional law. He said it got passed down to the states as it should be. He clarified it right then and there. And yet they're clearly ignoring this so they could raise money off politics. You also have Nick Cole responding, saying Dems on their way to vote for nominee they didn't chose. Gained 28 likes. It's a clown running in a field. Lorca K says, no, you're not, not. Gained three likes. Don Quigley says abortion is eagle, getting four likes. Jewish New Yorker says, interestingly enough, they do not have a New York flag, but they do have the U.S. flag and Israeli flag. Says, quote, I hate to break it to you, but Roe versus Wade was reversed, and now it's the state's right. Getting five, let's make it six likes. Because, again, it's, it's down to the states. Michael James simply says killing babies, yay, getting one like. Texas says, you dip crap. No, it's a state rights issue. Getting five likes. Oh, reverse to dipshit. Ah, a little slow there, but I got it. Let's see. Most people are actually roasting her. Not getting a lot of likes, but in terms of the number of comments, most of them are disagreeing with Miss Candy. Now, all the top comments come to the main, you know, main comment section come from Paul Zupa saying, quote, reproductive freedom, quote, quote, is the most disgusting euphemism Democrats have ever come up with um, yet for um, killing effing babies. Is ghastly getting 508 likes, which yeah, it's also showing how far the Overton Libdo has shifted throughout the years with the Democrat Party in the middle and the, and the people in the Republican Party. I mean, back just in the 90s, both parties agreed that abortion was bad, not a good thing. They thought it was bad, and morally vacuous, is evil. But both of them agreed it was not a good thing. Now, what Democrats used to say, which even some Republicans they wouldn't say it out loud, but maybe some of them would agree, 
what they would say is it's supposed to be safe, legal, and rare. That was the old standard. It's a very culturally speaking, you weren't it's supposed to be frowned upon, it's supposed to be for emergencies only. And yet nowadays it's so disgusting. Even my friends who are you do have friends who are, are pro-choice, even they're horrified by people on social media who are bragging about abortion, which that is disgusting to say the least. I mean, bragging about that? I mean, that's horrifying that some people would brag about that. And yet, that's how far culturally and politically a society has crumbled and shifted throughout the years. It's insanity. And yet, we see that time and time again. Now, scrolling down more and more, we also have Common Sense Prevail saying, come on, come on, men, stand up and do your job. It says, real men protect and care for pregnant women and their babies. True. Getting 168 likes. Yeah. Now, I don't think we'll ever see it. I mean, that reminded me of another idea one of my friends had. Again, I'm not sure if we'll ever see a, a federal law, but it would be interesting culturally, culturally if there's more pressure for people to stay in committed relationships once a pregnancy were to occur. Which, again, statistically speaking, well, I, and morally, I think is what's best for the baby. But, yeah, it used to be, we, it, it used to be a thing called shock and weddings for a reason. And culturally speaking, the father would... <laughs> Sometimes you have a young man at gunpoint and say, you're getting married, son. I mean, yeah, you speak. A lot of people say that's controversial, but I mean, it's one of those things where I don't know if culturally we'll ever get to that point again. Nowadays, it seems like, culturally speaking, a lot of people just want the easy way out or the more they want what it, what's going to cost them the least amount of interference with their old lives. It's heartbreaking for a lot of folks. Or de well, Oh, let's say, uh, no, wait, we do have some more contrarian statements brewing to the surface. Again, boring. echo chambers get a little bit boring. EES says, reject Trump, vote for Harris. Getting 529 likes. There are 84 responses. That's one of the most virus. That's one of the most responded one. Lori Cake says, you don't even vote for her. Why the hell would anyone else? In 27 likes, which, yet, uh, interestingly enough, not a lot of Democrats, I think, are upset about that. I have a couple of friends who are uh, more left-leaning there. They, they are irate that, again, they voted for Biden. Yeah, now they just shoved him aside. They're going to have Kamala. She did get 27 likes again. Cat Just Me says no, it's getting 20 likes. Bob is pissed, says no, so I'm getting two likes. DA says no, Wendy says no. The gloves off, Saul says no. Philip Anderson says, you, Anderson says, you lying piece of shit. The voters in each state decide on abortion and it takes up to their state legislators. True, getting 780 likes. Which again, if you're more of a constitutionalist, which I am, I would say, yes, this is a state rights issue. Even if I don't agree with the way a state votes on um, the particular, particular policies around it, again, it should be down to the states. Going down more and more, Insurrection Barbie says, why are you lying to voters? You know damn well you can't do anything because it is be uh, because the Supreme Court cannot force states to allow abortion. They cannot force, allow to force states to stop abortion. It's up to the states, getting 625 likes. American Papa Bear says Trump didn't ban it. It's a state's issue. If you don't like the state's law on it, vote to change it. They literally, that's literally how democracy works. You're welcome, getting 756 likes. Which, again, they're right. I mean, if you're upset with it, I mean, have a state, you know, talk to your local representative in your state, get a, I mean, create a bill if you, if you so feel so inclined. I mean, that's how you get it done. Let's see here. Allied States of America says murders, and say it looks like, it, and again, I'm not sure if this is a quote for sure. There's a picture of Dr. Ben Carson with a quote, and it has a thing to, to imply it. it. Says quote, "If it's not a human being, then why are you harvesting organs from it?" Unquote. Good question. I got 78 likes. So, yeah, let's see. Here, all corrupt says they didn't ban abortion. The, the Supreme Court did. There's nothing you won't lie about. Getting 77 likes. And again, they didn't ban abortion. They just said the states get to decide. Again, some states have been, some states have banned it more, much more than others. Others, like Minnesota, can go all the way. So it'll be interesting to see how many Americans wake up to the fact that, again, this is a state rights issue. I mean, even if Kamala wanted to, not going to stick. So it'll be interesting to see, politically speaking, is this really it shouldn't be, but I think this will be an effective mechanism or effective topic to get voters riled up on the left and the right. Even though, again, it's already been settled. But let me know in the comments. I know this is a very 
controversial topic. It gets people, a lot of people riled up, a lot of, a lot of passion around it. So I think it will get some people to vote one way or the other, even if, again, the president does not matter in that regard for this topic. That being said, do you think it will still drive a lot of people to the polls, left and right? As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Now going over to the business blunder of the day, you have BMW recalling about 290,000 SUVs. Now this comes to us thanks to Local 2, either I iconic BMW logo. And they say, this is again, this is by again, a news source this morning. They say, quote, BMW recalled over 290,000 top selling SUVs due to interior cargo rail could detach in a crash. Which is one of the silliest recalls I've ever heard of. Now they know that the impact vehicles will cover the following. Again, 2018 to 2023 BMW X3 SUVs. Again, recalled is going to be impact 2018, 2023 BMW X3 SUVs. They say that the luxury vehicle company said that the attachment for the interior cargo rail may become detached or in a rear crash, which can potentially cause their cargo rail to come off, increasing the risk of injuries. Affected owners can visit the dealership to have the issue fixed at no cost. Notification letters will be mailed out August 30th. Or just tune to the show as we're usually, you know, 30 days or more ahead of all these automotive recalls. And I'm not sure how many people really check their physical mail these days. So not great news for, again, it's a BMW. They're already not known for being the most robust and, you know, reliable vehicles on the planet. It's usually why, you know, people buy Toyota for that metric. But having a recall for an SUV that you're already paying, you know, almost, what is it, six figures for something of them for? It's astronomical how expensive some of these SUVs are getting these days. Now, uh, granted, it'll be, it'll be free for the consumer, as all recalls are. So that's fine and dandy, but it also costs you your time, and depending on how long this takes for them to fix, maybe you have to use a loaner car for a couple days, or heaven forbid you have to actually use a stranger's car, use something like an Uber or a Lyft. Lord only really knows where they work or where they come from. But, yeah, not great. The mechanics aren't going to be happy. The dealerships aren't going to be happy. Because, again, they, the manufacturers are going to pay the dealerships to fix this. It's called warranty work. That pay rate is a fraction of the usual rate that they charge for traditional things like, you know, the regular maintenance that you do on your vehicle and upselling like that. So it really is bad all around and not great news for a premium SUV and premium auto manufacturer. So I gotta say, BMW, you are certainly the business blunder of the day. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, try to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I greatly appreciate it. Also, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make sure better and better. Lastly, don't get to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.